Good afternoon and uh, good morning to those of you on the West Coast. Uh, this is SK Ghosh. I would like to welcome each and every one of you to our first one hour seminar on Surfside, Florida building collapse of June 2021 and ACI 318 building code requirements for structural concrete. This is part one of four parts that we are planning for you. The what what happened first of all is on Thursday, June 24th of 2021. This is now uh, over six months ago at approximately 1.25 a.m. really middle of the night. Champlain Tower South, a 12 story beachfront condominium in the Miami suburb of Surfside, Florida partially collapsed, 98 people died. The 98 people died is a very dry kind of bottom line. Uh, most of you would remember the search for bodies was excruciating uh, with relatives not knowing what to expect. Uh, a whole lot more people than 98 were injured, some seriously, and obviously the hundreds of people who lived in, in that complex uh, lost their homes. So this was a, a major tragedy uh, all around. I do want to emphasize to start with that the National Institute of Building Sciences under uh, with, with Terry McAllister, a, a very competent uh, engineer leading the team, is doing the official investigation of the collapse. Uh, it will take time, but eventually we will find out what happened. Uh, my purpose today or on the other days is not to speculate as to what happened, why anything happened or anything like that. Uh, my, my purpose is a, a simple one. Uh, today, I will try to describe to the best of my ability and understanding what we believe happened and then the the what I want to uh, uh, really stress is that the building was designed by the 1971 edition of ACI 318. Since then, uh, through the 2019 edition, which is the current one, there have been enormous improvements in in uh, uh, four areas the durability of concrete itself, the durability of reinforcing steel, uh, the structural integrity requirements, and also the design of flat plate column structures. In uh, succeeding sessions, I want to show you uh, these improvements, discuss them, and if there is a message out of the four presentations, it is that a modern concrete building that is in compliance with current ACI 318 will perform infinitely better than the Surfside building did. I, I, I think we have every reason to uh, rest assured that what what happened is is uh, is is unique. It 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 didn't it never happened before. It's very unlikely to happen uh, again. And and more importantly, uh, the code provisions have been improving uh, at a fairly rapid pace. And, and an appreciation of those improvements, I think, is, is, is good for engineers. In, in uh, this presentation, I have uh, 
relied heavily on uh, two newspapers who have done an excellent job of presenting in uh, in understandable language with impressive graphics uh, what happened and and what they presented evolved as more and more was learned the two newspapers are new york times and Miami Herald, the local newspaper, if I may call it that. And yes, absolutely, SK is correct. Uh, these conclusions or, or, or uh, what, what I'm about to present is uh, my own work in consultation with the Miami Herald and um, I am very grateful to two of my collaborators, so who are both mentioned on this first slide. Sarah Blasky is the lead investigative journalist with the Miami Herald. And um, Nikki Lewis, who is a PhD candidate, helped with the modeling. She's an incredibly bright woman who has a great future in front of her, and I'm um, in debt to both of these uh, professionals for what they added to this work. So I'm, I apologize, I just got to figure out exactly how to, oh, there we go, forward each of these slides. Okay, a little bit of history on how I actually got involved uh, doing this work. And um, I, so for those of you who know me, you know that most of my research has been in seismic design and evaluation, but actually seismic design and evaluation really set me up well to do this forensic investigation with the Herald. So initially, I was interviewed by a number of different news organizations, um, including the New York Times. And I contacted the Herald, actually based on something that they had presented, which I thought was incorrect. And when I started this work, I thought it was very important that we all give um, the investigative team patience, you know, give them time to really study this collapse sequence. And um, I had told the Herald that I thought what they presented was erroneous, and actually, rather than saying to me, well, I don't think you know what you're talking about, they actually kept interviewing me, kept coming back to me, and eventually hired me to conduct this forensic analysis with their team. So this isn't something that I did in isolation. I worked very much with their team, and actually, because I was working with their team, I ended up getting access to photographs, permits, et cetera, that... I wouldn't have been able to access without them. Sarah Blasky is, was the lead um, journalist on this, and she really, I think, just did a fantastic job and um, really listened to me, which I thought was very helpful um, because, you know, we fed off of each other and also respected each other's expertise, and that was really helpful. You will note that the information that I provided to you is different than the information that I'm about to present because some of the photographs are owned by the Miami Herald and so um, they are not to be distributed. The approach that I used was an approach that I've used when I've actually done forensic evaluation of buildings that have been damaged in earthquakes. So um, what I started out with, which I think is pretty logical, is a review of the photographs and as well as videos of the damage. and. We probably looked at those over three months. I've said to others when I present this that my children always came down and said to me, Mom, are you looking at that building again? You know, and so the first thing really I think we all do when we do forensic evaluations is to evaluate the photographs. We, of course, reviewed permits. Um, there were over 50 permits uh, starting in 1980, and this building was built in 1980. So there's a lot of work that's been done on this building. We did our best to study the drawings. I provided a set of drawings that were actually provided by the city of Surfside, so I did not put those drawings together. So there's a reduced set of structural drawings. You'll see there are drawings that are repeated, and we'll talk a little bit about that. There are reports that have been available. I'm sure you've seen this in the news. Um, there was a whole site that the city of Surfside set up, um, but also the lawyers that were working with the Miami Herald ended up getting a lot of information that was not publicly available. So we use that as well. Using all of that and interviews that the Miami Herald conducted with survivors of the collapse, we established a timeline, and I will talk about that timeline. And then what 
you know, we did on the engineering side, as well as looking at all of this, is to conduct some nonlinear analyses. And these nonlinear analyses were quite sophisticated. We're using a program called LS Dyna. And um, this approach that I'm using is something that I've published. So it's a peer reviewed modeling approach. And um, really, we tried to look at different scenarios. And the second half of the talk is going to focus on that modeling. The first half of the talk is going to focus on the timeline and the drawings as well as the photographs. So one of the things that I have learned about nonlinear analysis is that you can pretty much get this nonlinear analysis to show whatever you want it to show by fooling around with the modeling. And that is not what we wanted to do. We wanted to use, as um, Dr. Ghost just said, we wanted to use the timeline and the observations and the photographs to validate the model. So if we had a model that didn't match what we saw in terms of the damage, then we considered that model not to be valid or that scenario not to be valid. And again, I'll talk about that in the second half of the talk. So some from an initial interviews that, that um, were conducted um, for me, people kept asking me, well, what do you think is the reason that the building failed? 